Hey everybody, I hope you are having a wonderful day. I am here with the Zero Plus Protocol Simulator boards. If you saw my unboxing video, you heard me say that I specifically requested that they sent me these boards, and I did it with good reason, uh, but I had no idea that I was actually going to need them, or at least uh, this one, in my first project. So let me explain. When you do something like I built the Key Studio scale they sent me these two weights and they call them reference weights and this one is a hundred grams if you can see it and this one is 50 grams and the idea is i'm sure these aren't perfect you can see where they've been machined out to be pretty dang close but the idea with these is that you know in the beginning that this is definitely a hundred grams and you know that this is 50 grams and you can use these two points of reference to calibrate your scale. One other thing, when I would do things like live sound installations, I would use what they called a reference microphone. And that microphone would go in the middle of the room. And the idea behind it is that some microphones pick up the highs a little bit better and some are gonna pick up the bass a little bit better. But this microphone was a very special microphone that had a known quantity. And so what happened was when I plugged it into my equipment, my equipment already knew the sound characteristics of this mic. And so I could use that microphone to balance out the sound of the room without worrying that the microphone was influencing what my equipment was seeing because I was getting a perfectly flat sound level. And that is the idea behind these. These are basically reference boards. So let me explain what I mean. A little while ago, I was building a DMX controller for some stage lighting using this Tinkerkit shield. And the example sketch was not working. And so what happened was I decided to take the Zero Plus Logic Analyzer and hook it up. And I was able to read the signals that this thing was putting out, but I was not able to decode them. And so at that point, what I didn't know was, is this not working properly? Or is this not configured properly to read the signals and to decode them? And you know what? The reality was it was both. This, the example sketch didn't work. This, my settings weren't right to decode. And so enter this. This is the protocol generator that contains a DMX 512 sample signal. So you know what, just to, to step back, we do this all the time. If you are working on your car and your taillight isn't working, you may decide to take a bulb that you know works and stick it in the socket that isn't working just so that you can eliminate the bulb from the equation. It's really difficult to solve problems when you don't know if the problem is the bulb or the problem is the wiring. And just like that, in this situation, I didn't know if the problem was this board or the problem was this thing. And again, as I said, it was both. So what did I do? Well, if you look at these things here, these piles of dip switches, you can see that somewhere in here we have DMX 512. I'm going to find it. DMX 512. So when you look at this, you see that you set the first three switches to up, the second two switches to down, the last three switches to up. So if I take this thing and I go three up, then two down, and three up, make sure they're all fully there, and then I can choose whether I want this thing to to send out a signal constantly or if I want to wait until I push this button to send out a signal. So what did this do? Well, as you can see, when you look at number 26 here, it says that uh, PTD0 is DMX plus and PTD1 is DMX uh, minus. And so... The way this board works is this entire row of pins is ground and then I've got this is DMX plus and this is DMX minus. And so what that allowed me to do was to instead of hooking the zero plus logic analyzer up to the tinker kit, I was able to first hook it up 
to the protocol simulator. And what that allowed me to see was that I needed to increase the depth that I was sampling at and I needed to change a few of the parameters. And so as soon as I changed the parameters, I was able to kind of hone in on what I needed to do to decode DMX with this. And then immediately I was able to take this board out of the equation, knowing that the settings on this were right and hook this up and read and decode and figure out that this thing was not putting out the same kind of signals that this thing was. And so that's how I figured out my sketch was wrong. That's how I figured out that nothing was right on this thing. So um, from my perspective, that is very, very cool. And as you begin to look through these things, you can see that, you know, there's just tons of protocols from one wire to three wire and, and USB. And so as I'm looking at doing some decoding, this thing can prove to be a real time saver. So why don't we hook one of these bad boys up? Uh, let's go ahead and read the DMX protocol. One of the things I like to do, I can hook the probes directly onto uh, the pins, but I like to use these male-female DuPont connectors, and it gives me two things. One, it gives me a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of breakaway. So I'd, I'd much rather the, the clips just pour right off these pins than to uh, break the clips trying to stay on these tighter gripping pins down here so um let's see one of the things i like about having the 32 channel version i know this is a luxury but i like having a bunch of sets of these probes and so what i'm going to do is hook up this one to the ground now if i were to look at the instructions here again it tells me that when i'm using dmx that ptd0 is the DMX positive pin. Now, looking at the logic analyzer, I can see that uh, A0 is up here in the upper left-hand corner, and that's brown. And then as I would go on, it would be red, then orange, then yellow. So uh, I can see that the brown pin is the one that's gonna be going to PTT0. So let's hook that up right here. And yeah, so I like having a bunch of sets of these probes that I can hook up separately and then plug them into the logic analyzer. So all I need to do is to make sure that the brown wire is in the upper left hand corner and I can plug straight in right there, go brown to brown and Bob's your uncle, we're hooked up. So when you buy something like one of these logic analyzers, you are absolutely buying the hardware and the software as a package. And uh, so we're gonna check out the software a little bit. This is how it comes by default. You'll get a full review of this when I review the unit. But uh, what I wanna do is I wanna right click this and add a protocol decoder. And by default, they give you 129 protocols that you can decode for free. These used to be things that they would charge extra for, but now you get 129 of them when you buy the unit. So we're going to come in here and we're going to just type in DMX. And we're going to find DMX 512. And we're going to hit next. Uh, channel 0 is the brown wire that we hooked up to. We want to do D plus decoding. When it comes to parity, we want to tell it that we want none parity. Uh, because it's a 512 uh, byte protocol, we want 512 bytes. These are all by default because it knows already what DMX is. So we're going to hit next. And then just to clear out the screen and to save the memory, I'm going to delete all other buses and channels. And so now I have a nice clean screen here. Now, before I try to do any packet recording and packet decoding, I thought it would be a good idea to Google Zero Plus DMX 512. That Google search will bring me here where I can click on the DMX 512 Logic Analyzer Zero Plus link, and I will be taken to a page that gives me a screenshot of what the thing should basically look like when it has captured some DMX data and a little bit of information about the DMX protocol. And you'd think, okay, cool, there's a user manual that's probably for the software itself. And if you think that, you'd be wrong because clicking this link will download a PDF that is specifically for capturing DMX 512 on the Zero Plus Logic Analyzer. Opening the zip file reveals an 18 page document on how to properly capture and decode DMX 512 signals with the Zero Plus Logic Analyzer. And scrolling through, they give you all the various settings, all the things that you'll want to check as you're trying to decode your DMX signals. 
and coming down here to page 14 they even give you some extra information about uh, what kind of memory depth and what kind of speed you want to record at you want this to be four times higher than the signal that you're trying to test and it gives you a little example of what some DMX code would look like and uh, as you come down here you can also see that they have some visualizations of those packets that are flowing through the packet analyzer coming down here they also have some things if you'd like to try to visualize what you're seeing over DMX you can actually show the different colors that are being produced on the channels through their RGB image decoder now if you don't find this document to be enough there's also another PDF that's available that gives a little bit more information on decoding DMX 512 signals as well as how to visualize them with some updated information and if you still have problems getting enough information on decoding your signals they have a contact form and you can say hey I need some help decoding DMX 512 signals my problem is this you know this is what I'm trying to do and they will respond and help you get your signals decoded which I think is pretty awesome so without further ado we are going to hit the single capture button up here and this device will dutifully wait for a DMX 512 signal to appear on the bus which will happen as soon as I push the little button on the protocol simulator now that I've hit that it will instantly decode these packets and as I zoom out I can take a look over here and I will see a series of DMX packets although this isn't too complicated it's good to know that if we want to come in here and change the base encoding we can change it to uh, a decimal and so as we look at this thing we can see that a, a DMX packet is broken up by a big break and then you have this mark after break this MAB packet that just sits here and then uh, we've got a little start code that tells us it is getting ready to send a packet and then the way DMX works you have this initial packet which is most of the time zero but not always uh, but you can pretty much ignore this packet and then you have your um, a couple of other packets in between and then all of a sudden you have channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 channel 5 and so we can see that if this was a light we would be sending out channel 1 to a strength of 38 channel 2 to a strength of 39 channel 3 to a strength of 40 so thanks to the protocol simulator board we were able to properly configure the logic analyzer to both capture and decode DMX data now in the real world I would bump this up to 128 K and I would drop this down and do this at 200 megahertz because it needs to be four times faster than the signals that I'm trying to capture which is another reason to have a quality logic analyzer but because I was able to properly set things up I know that in the next video when I do the review of the logic analyzer itself that everything's properly configured and if everything is right with my DMX board I should be able to read and decode and get some actual usable information from it so it's not really my style to tell you that you need to absolutely run out and buy these boards but if you have a logic analyzer if you have a really nice scope and you are interested in hardware hacking and you're interested in doing more than your typical I squared C and uh, and RS-232 serial then I encourage you to check these boards out and see if there's something that you might want to add to your hardware hacking arsenal so hey thank you Zero Plus for sending these out thank you guys for watching and hope everybody has a great day